Hi, this is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to DVD Architect. And here we are in part three of our four-part series we're calling Basic Training with DVD Architect. And here in part three, we have our basic menu that we've created. It's pretty much a menu page that links to a movie. There's a lot you can do with that. The program comes with some wonderful themes, buttons, and backgrounds. Themes, as you can see down here in the lower left panel, themes include text styles and button styles and backgrounds. So for instance, if I were to drag this action theme on here, you'd see that this adds both a look to the background, a text style, and a style for your button. You can, of course, modify these any way you want. Go down here, just grab one more. I can grab this, a nice birth announcement. Some very cool looking, in a variety of styles, uh, menus that you can modify. Now, in addition to the themes, you can modify individual elements. Say, for instance, I liked this theme, but I didn't like the button. I can select from a huge category of button styles, and I can apply a button style simply by selecting the button selecting the button style here on the button page and then clicking the swap button or replace button button <laughs> and it replaces the existing button with a completely different style of button. Additionally, I can change the background. As you can see, all of the themes are represented as backgrounds here. So if I like the background to one, but I want to use the button style from another, easy to do. And that's fine if you just want your menu to be a background with a link on it. There's much more you can do. If I select the background here, I can go over to background media and from background media, I can select the option to add my own custom video or still background. Likewise, I can add music by selecting the option here to add my own music and do a lot of modification to it and create some very, very cool looking disc menus. Now, once I've created the disc menus, I may want to add some other flourishes to it. So for instance, I want it, may want to add scene and chapter markers to my movie. I can do that here simply by double clicking on the link or selecting the link here on the project overview panel and double clicking on play movie. That brings my movie up here on the timeline. And as you can see, there it is laid out on the timeline and I can create scene and chapter markers. The first scene and chapter marker is already there, but any other scene or chapter marker I want to add, I just move the playhead to a certain position, click on insert scene chapter marker, and now I can give it a custom name. I can call this one dad press enter, move to another spot in here. We'll add another scene marker. We'll call this one Jason and on and on. Now you may notice by the way, that when I added Jason, I got a little bitty uh, yellow spot there with a, with an exclamation mark on it. That yellow spot is a warning that I'm not quite on an iframe. If, if you know anything about MPEGs, you know that not every frame is fully represented in an MPEG. If you're not on an iframe, it can cause problems for your uh, chapter markers. All you gotta do is just give a little nudge like this and it will snap right to the frame. And if you wanna get really precise with it, by the way, you can zoom in either by using these plus and minus buttons along the lower right of the timeline or just use the up and down buttons on your keyboard so I can get really, really close here and I can nudge that scene chapter marker so it's exactly where I want it to be. Once I've added my scene and chapter markers and you can add, I think close to 99 is the official limit, although you may be able to go over that if you feel a need. Once you've added it, you can create then a scene selection menu. To create a scene selection menu, you right click on the play movie link or whatever the link is to your movie there on the project overview panel and select insert scene selection menu. And it will ask you how many links you want per page. Six is a good number. You can give the page a title, call it scene selection or whatever you want and click OK. And as you see, uh, a sub menu is added to your menu and this sub menu has all of these individual links. So let's take a look at how that looks. Go back to the main menu page. You can see that now we not only have a play movie button, but we also have a scene selection button. And when I double click on that, here is the scene selection menu. And now you can see we've got chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and on and on. There are many cool features uh, on this timeline, including, let me just go back into the movie here for a second, just double clicking on the movie. You have the option of adding alternative tracks of audio 
and video so you can show your video from another angle or give the option to show your video from another angle you can insert additional audio tracks and different languages and you can even add a subtitle track so that your viewer can see your movie with or without subtitles and I show you how to create buttons to make all those magic things happen there too a lot of cool stuff is a very very deep program with a lot of great features in it now in part four we're going to take all of the work that we did and we're going to create a DVD or a Blu-ray disc from it. And when we look, we'll see that even there we have some very cool options. Join me for part four of basic training with DVD Architect.